The movie sets off in the year 2018, where a spacecraft from the U.S. successfully lands on the moon. The spacecraft carries two American passengers, one being an astronaut named Sanders and another a famous African-American male named James Washington. Upon landing on the moon's mysterious dark side, Sanders unexpectedly discovers a large facility owned and controlled by a group of Nazi descendants. Sanders also catches sight of large tanks of helium-3, a priceless rare mineral that is known to be used in fueling nuclear power plants. All of a sudden, a Nazi soldier emerges behind Sanders and instantly shoots a gun on his head, which leads to his immediate death. Washington anxiously runs back to their U.S. spacecraft, but another Nazi soldier arrives and destroys their ship. The Nazi soldiers capture Washington and bring him to their facility called the Schwarzenegger. Meanwhile, on Earth, the U.S. president is currently working on her propaganda to be re-elected in office. She communicates with her campaign manager, Vivian Wagner, inside the White House, reprimanding her for the failed mission of the American space crew. Vivian reminds the president that the whole mission called Black to the Moon was her idea. Despite that, the president sharply protests her frustration and demands Vivian to quickly remedy the situation. After their call, the seemingly clueless U.S. president consults with her secretary, Michael Cullen, about the idea behind the American crew's mission. Cullen, the real person behind the propaganda, has instructed the U.S. president to hire James Washington, the famous black model, to go to the moon. He perceives that the deployment of Washington could have brought the U.S. president positive results for her campaign had it been successful simply because he is black and that their country has not landed on the moon for a long time. The United World Confederacy in New York City also discusses the status of the American spacecraft's landing on the moon. Cullen, who also serves as the U.S. Secretary of Defense, reports that the ship had successfully landed on the moon, but all communication stopped due to a signal malfunction. The other members suspect that the United States has a hidden agenda on their mission, but Cullen dismisses them. In the presidential campaign headquarters, Vivian scolds her subordinates and pressures them to give her better ideas before she reports to the U.S. president. Later, the Nazi facility called the Schwarzenegger is revealed to be a secret base developed during 1945. As World War II came to an end, the remaining Nazis planned a confidential space project in which they inhabited the moon. Decades after the confidential project, the Nazis were able to establish the Schwarzenegger on the dark side of the moon. They have also armed themselves with massive army vessels. Inside the secret base, a classroom is set up and moderated by a German teacher named Renate Richter. Amidst being born and raised on the moon within the Schwarzenegger, Renate has grown to be an Earth enthusiast with a kind of heart for humanity. During their class, Renate teaches a group of Aryan kids using the English language while reviewing their knowledge about the Nazi movement's history. On the other side of the secret base, the armed forces managed by the Fourth Reich bring in their captive, Washington. Klaus Adler, the Nazi commanding general in the Schwarzenegger, presents their prisoner, Washington, to the current ruler of the Fourth Reich, named Wolfgang Kurzfleisch. Adler reports to Kurzfleisch that Washington is a spy from Earth as he strips Washington off his helmet. The Germans discover that Washington is black and they display their shock at his appearance. Back in the classroom, Renate continues her Earth-related lectures through a film viewing with the intention of further educating the Aryan students. She flashes a film titled Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator and heavily praises the film, calling it one of the world's most famous short films. She tells the Aryan students about the great dictator who wishes for the entire world to be in the hands of the supreme leader of the Nazis. Shortly after, Adler interrupts the class to inform Renate about their captive Washington as he requests for her expertise in examining him. At the same time, Washington talks to the Nazi soldiers in an attempt to create a distraction. He manages to run away from Wolfgang and the Nazi soldiers, which instantly initiates a ruckus inside the Schwarzenegger. The baffled Nazi soldiers chase Washington, but initially fails to catch him after his long jump toward a large machinery. 
Washington bumps against a metallic structure and falls headfirst on a ceiling piece as he hides from the Nazi soldiers. During the interval, Renate becomes thrilled upon hearing about the arrival of an Earthling, causing her to bombard Adler with numerous questions. Just then, Washington comes down from an air vent and abruptly knocks Adler unconscious. Washington rushes towards Renate and asks her how to escape the base. She freezes in shock and is unable to answer him. Washington runs toward the nearest looking exit, but he ends up opening an airlock that keeps the base from maintaining its gravity. As a result, the airlock is deactivated, causing both Washington and Renate to be forcefully pushed outside by the air. Washington holds Renate tightly and succeeds at pushing themselves back inside the secret base. Adler wakes up from the hit and orders the Nazi soldiers to immediately arrest Washington. He is about to shoot him, but Washington strongly protests. Washington states that he knows a lot of important people, including the President of the United States of America. This claim by Washington gains the interest of Adler, and they take him to the Nazi chief scientist, who is also Renate's father, Dr. Richter. Inside the laboratory, Dr. Richter and Adler study Washington's body composition. They notice the difference in his appearance, convinced of making Washington one of them by altering his complexion. Dr. Richter also finds Washington's smartphone and confiscates it before they proceed on interrogating him. The two Germans ask him to reveal his mission, and Washington replies that he was just paid by the U.S. president to be on the expedition. Washington continues, saying that all their equipment inside the laboratory are outdated compared to the devices on Earth. After the interrogation, Adler meets with Renate to discuss their legal union. He informs her that he has received confirmation from the Department of Racial Purity about their genetic match and he offers Renate to mate with him. Adler emphasizes that it is their destiny to produce perfect offspring for the people. He also reveals to Renate about his plans on leading the Fourth Reich by defeating its current ruler, Wolfgang, along with his intentions on conquering the Earth altogether with her. Renate listens to him quietly as the two of them stare at the view of the Nazi base. Beside the Schwarzesson is a construction site where the Gotterdammerung is located. The Gotterdammerung is a giant space vessel developed by the Fourth Reich to maternalize their plan on conquering the Earth. Dr. Richter proceeds with an initiation on the vessel, describing the Gotterdammerung as a miracle weapon developed for four decades. On the other hand, Dr. Richter tells Wolfgang and the Nazi soldiers that Washington's confiscated smartphone has more computing power than their biggest computers altogether. Dr. Richter connects Washington's phone to their giant battleship, which gives the ship power to launch. However, the ship's engine quickly stops due to the low battery of Washington's phone. Adler takes the smartphone and realizes that they need to retrieve more of it, asking the permission of Wolfgang to return to the Earth. Meanwhile, Renate enters the laboratory and reunites with Washington. She finds him in the middle of being Aryanized, where he is forced to continuously listen to the Nazi ideology. Renate shuts off the audio and approaches Washington inside to talk. She fascinatingly asks him about his appearance while trying to catch him up with the situation inside the secret base. Renate hurries to leave the laboratory as soon as Dr. Richter returns, who rejects Washington with an albinizing drug, thinking that his appearance is a genetic malfunction. Later, General Adler prepares his return to Earth as he boards a flying saucer. Renate insists on coming with him, but Adler refuses and instead reassures her of his return. Dr. Richter arrives at the scene, along with the albinized Washington, proudly presenting to the Germans his creation. Adler decides to bring Washington along in their expedition, as Washington agrees, playing like a Nazi. In an instant, the flying saucer heads to the Earth and lands on a meadow in New York City. Adler changes the itinerary and orders Washington to take him to the U.S. president instead. The two find Renate alighting the flying saucer, realizing that she has sneaked into the ship with them. Adler reprimands Renate, emphasizing that the Earth is a dangerous place for her, but Renate won't listen. The three go on with their mission as Adler and Renate observe the surroundings on Earth. 
they find a Volkswagen bus and steal it from a bunch of black men. Washington discovers his albinized appearance on a mirror and complains at the two Nazis, leading to a heated argument between him and Adler. Later that day, Washington leads Adler and Renate to the U.S. president's campaign manager, Vivian. Adler carries Vivian to the Volkswagen bus and kidnaps her before abandoning Washington. He and Renate interrogate Vivian inside an abandoned warehouse. Vivian initially resists, but she eventually takes an interest towards General Adler and agrees to let them meet the U.S. president. The two parties meet inside the White House as Vivian introduces General Adler and Renate to the president. Vivian describes the two Nazis as the miracle that the president has been looking for. Through the moving words and aspirations of Renate, the U.S. president mimics the campaign style of the Nazis. She uses a script created by Renate and delivers it to the people, successfully convincing them with her words. The Nazi-style propaganda by the U.S. president is favored by the citizens, eventually increasing her chances of being re-elected. After three months, Renate and Adler continue to spend time on Earth, neglecting their supposed mission. Washington, who knows about the Nazis on the moon, tries to warn people on the streets of New York, but to no avail. After some time, he was recognized by modern-looking Renate. She happily greets him, but the two end up in a fight and get sent to a police station. Washington nags at the police officer, introducing himself as the black model astronaut James Washington. However, the police officer dismisses him and insists that the person he is pretending to be is already dead. Washington leaves the police station angry and upset as Renate tries to cheer him up. She invites him to a nearby movie house to see Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator, and the two watch the film together. Later, Renate comes out of the movie house, confused at how long the movie actually was. With the help of Washington, Renate realizes that all this time, she has been seeing only the edited and shortened portion of the original movie. Contrary to what she shows, the original movie turns out to be about a mockery toward the supreme leader of the Nazis. Her beliefs are shaken after seeing the movie, thus she approaches a group of American Nazi followers nearby to confirm her understanding. However, she ends up being verbally harassed by them. Washington steps in to protect Renate, and a rough fight ensues on the sidewalk. Meanwhile, Vivian and Adler spend time together while talking about their future plans, including the collaboration between Adler and the U.S. president. Adler becomes extremely elated at the thought of finally overthrowing the current Nazi leader Wolfgang while he tells Vivian his plans. The two head to the presidential campaign headquarters as their hangout turns into a makeout session. Suddenly, Vivian and Adler stop at the sight of Wolfgang and his Nazi soldiers who were watching them. A Nazi soldier takes Vivian away to a separate room while Wolfgang talks to Adler. The Fourth Reich's ruler has returned to the Earth after three months without any news from Adler's previous mission. Wolfgang also learns about Adler's plans as he angrily confronts him, accusing him of high treason. He also reveals to Adler that he has organized the mission, Meteor Blitzkrieg, a surprise attack consisting of an overwhelming space force and flying saucers that are bound to hit the Earth. This space force comes from the spacecraft Siegfrieds that transforms asteroids as missiles. Just then, Renate enters furiously into the headquarters with Washington after she figures out Adler's real plans. She complains to Adler and calls off their union. Wolfgang points his gun to shoot Adler but Vivian emerges, eliminating Wolfgang and the rest of his Nazi soldiers. Renate and Washington run out of the headquarters as Vivian freezes in place. With Wolfgang dead, Adler assumes the position as the Fourth Reich ruler. Adler expresses his gratitude to Vivian with a kiss, taking her tablet computer before finally abandoning her. He continues with his plans and boards Wolfgang's flying saucer back to space. Adler sees the progress of the mission Meteor Blitzkrieg, giving his final instructions of launching the attack on Earth. In an instant, numerous flying saucers open fire throughout the city of New York as they destroy the Statue of Liberty and other buildings. While the operation of Meteor Blitzkrieg continues, Vivian, Cullen, and the U.S. President watch its development through the news. 
Amidst the chaos, the U.S. president becomes thrilled as she believes that wartime presidents always get re-elected, giving her a high and probable chance of winning. Meanwhile, the U.S. Air Force begins their counterattack as they fire towards the flying saucers. The members of the United World Confederacy gather to discuss the threat brought by the flying saucers. While the members are pointing fingers, Cullen and the U.S. president arrive at the scene. The U.S. president reveals to the members about the existing Nazi descendants who have remained on the moon for decades. She also presents to them their secretly militarized exploration ship called the USS George W. Bush. Outside of the Earth, Vivian is appointed by the president as the commander of the ship as she directs the nuclear weapons towards the Nazi flying saucers, destroying them. As the U.S. spaceship suffers a hit, the U.S. president later finds out that most of the members of the United World Confederacy have also secretly armed their spaceships. The U.S. president becomes furious because the members have also violated the agreement as they secretly created their own militarized spaceships. In effect, she outrightly expresses her annoyance at the thought that she failed to outsmart them since the other nations also took their agreement for granted. Nonetheless, the nations dispatch their ships and fight together against the Nazi spacecrafts. Later, General Adler returns to the Schwarzesone with Vivian's tablet computer to finally launch their biggest warship, the Gotterdammerung. Countless Nazi soldiers prepare to board the Gotterdammerung while Adler waits for Dr. Richter to power up the ship's engines. Down the streets, Renate and Washington evade the incoming attacks while running. Renate tells Washington that they have to return to the moon in order to stop Adler and save the Earth. Washington refuses at first as he is influenced by his previous experience. Even so, she effectively convinces him as the two of them board their previous spacecraft. They fly directly to the Gotterdammerung and split up as Washington goes to paralyze the Gotterdammerung's engines while Renate looks for Adler. Meanwhile, the United Nations spaceships successfully destroy all the flying saucers in space. Through Vivian's lead, the military spaceships head toward the moon to seek out Adler and his forces. Vivian and her crew discover the Schwarzeson as she instructs them to prepare the nukes. A crew member hesitantly asks about the innocent women and children in the secret base, but Vivian shuts him off and insists on firing the nukes. The U.S. crew then activates the nukes toward the secret base and kills the Nazi descendants inside. Adler is notified by the approaching enemy attacks of Vivian and urgently calls Dr. Richter to initiate the control panel of the Gotterdammerung. During this time, Washington sneaks behind Dr. Richter and knocks him unconscious. He looks through the control panel in hopes of finding a way to stop the engines. However, Adler has already ordered the Nazi soldiers to start the Helium-3 engines, which serves as the main cannon of the Gotterdammerung. In a flash, the gigantic Gotterdammerung ship emerges from its construction site and directly faces the USS George W. Bush. The Gotterdammerung easily destroys the small spaceships in its path, but the U.S. spacecraft skillfully evades its attacks. Vivian instructs the crew to fire nukes over the Nazi ship, and it causes a slight stumble at Adler and the Gotterdammerung. Adler then instructs the ship's chief pilot to fire their cannons even if it hits the Earth. The Nazi crew proceeds as he carefully takes aim of the cannon, which ultimately destroys some parts of the moon. Being satisfied at the sight, Adler intends to fire a cannon for the second time while the Nazi crew prepares. On the other side of the Gotterdammerung, Renate plays the national anthem around the ship causing every Nazi crew to pause in their place and do the Nazi salutes to pay their respects. Shortly after, Renate approaches Adler while aiming a gun at him. Despite that, Adler overpowers Renate and steals the gun from her. In defense, Renate butters up to Adler as she floods him with compliments and flattery. Adler does not buy her speech, but she continues, sarcastically giving him her respect using their Nazi hand sign. Renate successfully makes Adler do the hand sign where he comes into contact with a live wire and ends up being electrocuted. Renate takes this chance to rush Washington into shutting down the engine. She is interrupted by a wounded Adler as he prepares to stab her with his knife. However, Renate stabs and kills him first before he could launch his attack. 
Back in the control panel, Washington forcefully disconnects Vivian's tablet computer from the Goddardameron. Then, Renate and Washington successfully escape the gigantic Nazi ship before it completely crashes onto the moon. At the same time, the military warships of the United World Confederacy return back to their initial positions. The U.S. president congratulates Vivian and her crew for their victory against Adler and the Nazis, immediately after which Vivian exposes the presence of helium-3 spotted on the moon. The nations eventually learn that the Nazis were able to mine tanks of rare helium-3 minerals. A brawl ensues between the nation's officials as they fight over the rare mineral in the same manner that the nation's military spacecraft turn against each other in space. On the moon, Renate comes out of her escape pod in a spacesuit as she stares at the aftermath of the war inside the Schwarzesone. She returns to visit her classroom where she finds a few survivors. The survivors curiously ask her about her visit on Earth in which she expresses how different the planet is from what she used to know. Her expression immediately brightens as she reunites with Washington who has successfully turned back to his original complexion. Washington approaches her and the two hug in relief after seeing each other alive. Renate stares at Washington lovingly as she openly shows everyone her admiration toward him. Ultimately, the two kiss in front of a puzzled group of the Nazi survivors. An old woman outrightly questions Renate for kissing a black man, making the both of them pause. In turn, Renate reassures Washington of the loads of work to be done to educate the remaining survivors. The movie ends featuring the aftermath of the International Galactic War in which a huge portion of the moon is permanently destroyed. During the mid-credits, the planet Mars is displayed wherein a satellite lingers around its orbit.